Attention all shipping. Here is a gale warning. South to southeasterly gale, imminent in coastal sea areas, Needles, Portland, Lundy. Storm cones are being hoisted along south and southwest coast. Many people are under the impression that lifeboats are only called out to save life at sea under storm conditions, when the seas are tossed and swept by gales. But although the sea is ever treacherous with hazards of every description, accidents, errors of judgment, and sometimes danger even in a gentle breeze or ebbing tide, many of the lives saved each year are rescued by lifeboats on service in calm weather. Chroma during the holiday season seems very remote from the lifeboat service. Yet when this youngster in his rubber dinghy was carried almost imperceptibly by the tide and gentle breeze far out from the shore, it was the lifeboat that was called out. And the little fellow, now thoroughly scared, was picked up. An ordinary sort of job, with no danger to the crew, but it might have been serious for the child and his anxious parents. And the Cromer boat was named Henry Blogg. Henry Blogg, the lifeboat coxswain with more decorations than anyone else in the service. All around the coasts of Britain and Ireland, there are lifeboat stations with boats ready at all hours, day and night, to save life at sea, 154 of them. On the east coast of Scotland, the Peterhead lifeboat is called to render service to a fishing boat. Her engine has broken down and a rope has fouled her propeller. Completely disabled, she is in danger of drifting ashore. Ahoy there! Shall I pass you a lie? Aye! Can't start engine! Rope's foul! Even an apparently simple job like this calls for skillful seamanship and the gift of knowing instinctively what has to be done and how to do it. Just those qualities which are found in men of the lifeboat service. Down in the south of England, at Yarmouth, Isle of Wight, a motor yacht flies a distress signal. A doctor is needed. She cannot put into port herself as she is aground on a sandbank. The Yarmouth lifeboat is moored in the harbour, so the crew use a boarding boat to reach her. But with a doctor on board, they are soon away to the stranded yacht. The doctor quickly diagnoses the trouble and his patient is passed aboard the lifeboat on a stretcher. Just another job on the calmest of days. Yet, without the lifeboat service, how would the sick man have reached the hospital? On another part of the coast, at Lytham near Blackpool, is a lifeboat moored out in the estuary, which is also reached by a boarding boat. The Dun Leary, a motor sailing boat of a much earlier type, is still equipped with sails. Rigging the sails for service is no job for weaklings.
In Northern Ireland at Port Rush is a Watson motor lifeboat, one of the latest types with a deck cabin. Her engine room is a watertight compartment, and each engine is itself watertight. She has a crew of eight, and even in the roughest seas can take nearly 100 people on board. At Aran Moor, a rocky island off the northwest coast, is a brand new 46-foot lifeboat, the WM Tilson. In Southern Ireland at Baltimore, the lifeboat is also brand new. These lifeboats have a speed of over eight knots and can travel 230 miles without refueling. They are not built for speed, but with an exceptionally wide beam to increase stability in the roughest of weather. At Beau Marys on the Isle of Anglesey is stationed one of the free lifeboats generously given to the institution by the peoples of Southern Africa. She has been called to the aid of a boy clinging to a sinking boat, seen by the Coast Guard to be in difficulties. Hold on, Sonny. We'll be with you in a moment. Too exhausted to hang on much longer, a lifeboatman swims to the rescue. Station, mission completed. Returning to station. The South End lifeboat is stationed over a mile out to sea at the end of the longest pier in the British Isles. An electric train runs from end to end and a driver stands by at all hours in case of need to take the crew to the lifeboat house with all speed. Dungeness is one of the stations where women helpers give assistance both in hauling the boat from the house and in laying the heavy skids over which the boat slides to the sea. Every lifeboat is specially designed and built for the work it has been and stowing away the heavy skids. The shelving beach makes it necessary to bring in the boat bows on, in which position it is hauled up to the turntable and turned round to enter the house turn first in readiness for the next call. Old prints and pictures tell the early story of the lifeboat service of the thrilling rescue by the original, the first true lifeboat, off Tynemouth in 1770. Thirty-three years later, the nation responded to the appeal of Sir William Hillary for a national lifeboat service to be financed by the free gifts of all classes. Hillary was not only the founder, he took part in the rescue of over 300 lives, winning the gold medal for gallantry three times. Today at Whitby in Yorkshire, the old harbour lifeboat still possesses these end boxes which give the boat its self-writing properties. For many years after the foundation of the service, lifeboats were open rowing boats, depending on the brawn and muscle of the men at the oars. This, the number two boat at Whitby, is the last of the old pulling lifeboats in service.
later, sails were added. The sailing lifeboat was designed by Watson, who became naval architect of the institution in 1887. He also designed the famous royal yacht, Britannia. So through the period of pulling, sailing and steam to the fleet of 154 modern motor lifeboats of today, which have replaced the 280 boats of varying designs of 40 years ago. Right from its foundation, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution has depended entirely on the free gifts of all classes in the nation. Its lifeboat stations are managed by voluntary committees and honorary secretaries. Its income is collected by thousands of unpaid workers, and the whole of it is willingly subscribed by men and women who know the lifeboats are doing a great service to the nation and who give gladly because they feel they have a share in that service. The honorary secretary of a lifeboat station is not only responsible for all business connected with the station, he also calls out the lifeboat in case of need. Right, we'll launch. Two rockets are fired by the Coast Guard. One to show that the distress signal has been seen. And the other to indicate that action is being taken. Lifeboat service was never busier than during the war, and wreckage round our coasts, the result of that war, is still being cleared by salvage ships. These too sometimes need the help of the lifeboat. A diver frequently has to use underwater charges to free obstructions. Which even after five years under the sea may cause a nasty accident. It's a bad explosion. They'll need a doctor. Right, we're large. by radio from the lifeboat, the ambulance is standing by to rush the casualties to hospital as soon as they are brought ashore. A lifeboat must go where no other boat could go, do what no other boat could do, and continue its work even when badly damaged. But however badly damaged, a lifeboat will not sink. All her empty spaces are filled with air boxes, covered with calico, glued and painted. Even if hold 20 times, the rest of the 260 air boxes will keep her afloat. It costs over 2,000 pounds to lock up the air securely in these boxes in a modern lifeboat. Should the propeller be fouled by weed or wreckage, it can be cleared from a hatch in the deck. Engines in a lifeboat are watertight. They will continue running even if the engine room is flooded. The exhaust goes up inside the mast. Waterproof wireless sets are used. From the depot at Boreham Wood come the stores which are dispatched to the building yard and to stations all round the coast. Stores from this centrally situated depot can be sent off from mainline stations within two hours of the receipt of the demand. 
The present program of building is for 57 new lifeboats to be laid down at the rate of about 12 a year. A big order in the nature of over one and a half million pounds. The largest lifeboats cost about 28,000 pounds each. Gifts or legacies are always most gratefully received by the institution. The most acceptable are those given to be used for general purposes. But many people wish to preserve the memory of their own names or the names of their relatives by presenting a lifeboat. In all such cases, a tablet recording the gift is affixed to the boat which is given the name chosen by the donor. Wherever she may go, as long as she is in service, that tablet remains on the boat. Though motor mechanics are paid, some full-time, others part-time, the other members of the crew are not. They earn their living in other ways, and all are volunteers. Although, as one would expect, fishermen predominate, lifeboat crews include men from all walks of life. They are drawn from many trades and professions, butchers, builders, clergymen, carpenters, schoolmasters, provided that they have had previous sea experience. they all leave their normal occupations immediately they hear the maroons fired. Though these men are rewarded by the institution whenever they go out in the lifeboat, they are not bound by any contract. They go each time of their own free will. The lifeboat service is a service of men doing the work for the love of the thing. And because if called out, they know someone is in danger on the sea. One of the glories of the institution is that everything is voluntary. The service of the men and the gift subscribe. From the dreaded Goodwin Sands, many lives have been saved by the lifeboat service, which has a magnificent record. In the 128 years since its foundation, nearly 77,000 lives have been saved, 11 every week during all those years. But the cost is increasing. In 1938, it was £400,000. Last year, it was over three quarters of a million. But even this is less than fourpence per head of the population given so generously by British people to maintain this voluntary and indispensable service, whose splendid lifeboats and fine men are ready at all times and in all weathers to go out to save life at sea.